Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the Jade Gemini. Today I'm super excited to go ahead and bring you a video of this little guy right here. This is the Sofren SF15 pin pocket flashlight. But before going to get into this review, I want to make sure to get out of the way that I'm super happy to say that this was actually sent in by the manufacturer Sofren themselves. But keeping that in mind, I'm still going to go ahead and try and make this as honest of a review as possible. And point out things that I like, I love, I dislike, and if it applies, what is rubbish about the SF-15. First though, let me go ahead and get some size comparisons out of the way from some other common EDC pocket flashlights. So you can't get much more common, I think, than this guy right here. This is the i5R, same as the i5T EOS. So just a great single cell, double A size, double A compatible dual fuel flashlight here. So definitely a cool option there. And another pin light that's really popular as well. And one of my favorite lights ever. This is the Mini Pineapple Plus Raylight. So, so go ahead and get some width there. So as you can tell, with this being a double A and this being a triple A inside of here, you can see there is a size comparison. So not a big wide light at all, but definitely got some length since it is a pin light. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what do I like about this light? Well, the first thing that I like about this light is actually the fit and finish overall. You know, Sofren comes in at a great value for money um, with really good quality as well, right? And their lights have some good performance and features too. And this is exactly what is here. You get value, but you also get some quality as well. So it has this black finished hard, you know, hard coating type three, like you normally get anodized. And everything feels really nice. Everything's knocked down. This aligns up really well here. You've got an interesting little milling pattern here, but overall it's a pretty simple little light. And what that also goes in and does is lead me right into the next thing that I like about this light. It's just the sort of versatility and thought process of being able to hold this light in different manners and it'd be really comfortable. So you can get sort of a standard grip like this, which also, I found out that the light um, radio or the light frequency pattern does interface a little differently with the um, you know same frame rate that I'm using here on the camera. So just you know try and bear with that if you can, but it's steady for my eyes. So, but you have so many different options with this. You can sort of you know fist it like this, like the bezel down tactical style. Even though there's definitely not a tactical light, you can hold it like this. You can kind of hold it like this, like you're inspecting into something. Or what I think is cool is you can kind of hold it out like this as well. And we'll go ahead and get into why that's kind of cool a little later on. Um, but yeah, there's just lots of different ways to comfortably actuate this light. The pressure on the pad here is really easy to actuate long throw and a firm pressure. So it is easy to cycle through the modes, which you just Turn on, push down, half press, half press, let go. So really super easy in that way. The other thing that I do like is this pocket clip, pretty straightforward, but it does work. There's a lot of pocket clips on flashlights that don't work, so I'm just gonna call that out because, well, it does work. Overall, this is a pretty cool little simple straightforward flashlight, but what I love about it is definitely the next section all the little things that I'll tell you about here. First, let me get the party trick out of the way. And that is the fact that this light has more than meets the eye going on. The first thing that I do love is that this actually has a dual emitter built in to the emitter. So you have white light or you double tap. And now you've got a UV on the back of this thing. So this has completely new options that are then opened up at that point, since it has this UV built into it. And so this just sort of leads me into the next point that this is such a cool light 
for specific professional environments in so many different ways because it has the UV and the next feature that I love, which is the way this is made with the actual way it produces light at the front, it's really kind of unique. This is a TIR, which means this outside layer here is what throws the light, and then the exposed emitter in the inside is actually what reflects the light and has a flood. So you can see that with a soft beam here that is the throw, and then a soft secondary beam out here, which is the flood. Now, probably what I've learned is my favorite type is a reflector, as you can see here. So there, you're, you're looking directly at the emitter. There's no sort of lens involved here. The reflector, this chrome bit down in here, is what is doing all the reflecting and throw. And what's cool about this is, is you get a more distinct hotspot instead of it being so fuzzy of the actual um, flood. And then you also have a distinct, distinct hotspot. Now this one's a little broken up because they've orange peeled this reflector, which will make it where it's a little softer, but usually have a really defined line, almost like a pencil drawn line of the flood uh, or the hotspot. And then you have the flood as well. Now, what is so cool about this one is this has no reflector at all. So what you're seeing here is not a, um, it's no reflector, no lens. So what you're seeing right here is not a hotspot because you can see I'm moving it around. It's just reflecting where the light source is off of the table. But the reason that is is that this has just the raw LED from the front. And then it has this soft white not even a reflector, but just to sort of bounce back and produce and you know something that's opaque to bounce the light out in every direction. But it has this unanimous, just flat across the board, basically, spill, and that's it. There's no real hot spot with this. And this leads me into, this is such like a professional-based tool. It's such a shame that like more people don't know about this light because um, you know, if you're like a mechanic, for example, I feel like I feel like mechanics pull out of their pocket and do this all the time. They like get down in an engine bay, they're looking around, you know, they're actuating, you know, with their, well, I'm actuating with their finger, with the finger, but you know, they're going ahead and getting in there, getting in tight spots, doing things like that. Or another thing is, is I was under my sink fixing something and I was like, from the short amount of distance from here to here, right? I can illuminate everything under the sink. No need for like a hot spot and focusing and then there's a flood or anything like that. It is everything, just an opaque cast of light, just all together, or one layer of light is what I mean, cast all over. So I feel like this is such a cool light in that way that this could be used for professional um, you know, circumstances. And also when you then put in the fact that it has the UV, you know, even though I'm not in an industry that uses this. You know, I know when I used to work at an auto parts store, they would do um, AC check, you know, for the leaks. That would probably be the exact same thing for regular HVAC companies as well to go ahead and check things. This could also be something that, you know, could possibly be used to investigate with body fluids, things like that. I mean, you know, again, if you need a UV, you're gonna probably know a lot more about it you know, or a police officer that maybe needs something to illuminate right in front of them, a whole entire, you know, flooded area if they're writing paperwork or something. But then also, if you need to check something, you know, again, I'm not in those fields, so I don't exactly know all the ins and outs that you would need them, but I know in specific fields that do need a UV light, it would be nice to also have that white right on the same thing instead of having to have some special you know, light that's just used for that one thing. And I feel like the sort of design with the grip here, this is even easy, like if you put in your mouth, right? This is like, a, that sounds silly, but a lot of mechanics do it or, you know, get hands free. So this grippy area, even though it does hang down a little cause this is heavy at the end, it has this grippy area where this is not gonna fall out of your hands. So I feel like there's just a lot of really comfortable, smart ways that fit, fits into those specific specialty roles that this light is really going to excel at. The other thing that I love is the fact that this light uses a common battery type. I have mixed match um, lithium 
the, uh, right here, nickel pentahydride, I mean, rechargeable batteries, but they work just fine. So will alkaline. This thing will chew anything. It's not meant to have two um, 10440s in it or anything like that. Just standard, regular, you know, 1.3 to 1.5 volt, you know, triple A's. But still, that's an easy, you know, battery that is cheap to find, you know, to be able to find anywhere so in a professional environment you're not going to have to worry about running out and recharging your battery and waiting or you know you're something going ahead and getting missing or you know whatever the case you're going to get back in action right away really simple really straightforward so that's also something that's really really cool is it does have that common battery type and so i think like overall holistically there's just a really cool option available which is what i love here that this is going to fill like this isn't going to be a perfect light for everybody but i feel like the you know broadcast of the light the you know special comfort ways that you can go ahead and hold it i mean you can hold all sorts of lights in different ways but this feels like a little bit more awkward or this feels a little bit more awkward holding than this, right? So they've clearly thought these little things out for specific, you know, situations. And I feel like it's really cool in that man in that uh, manner. Now, there are some things to dislike about this light. Um, oh, well, there's one more thing to love, and that is the price. This is like $20, $23, something like that, right? I might even be overpricing that a little bit, but right in that $20 range, Anybody could have this if you lose it, if it gets broken, not that you'd intentionally want to, but you're not gonna be out like some $100 specialty tool and then I lost it and oh my gosh, my heart is broken. It, it's just another work tool. So instead of you buying something off the Snap-on truck, you know, and have it because it has the name Snap-on and it's a little really expensive and it has mediocre performance, this is gonna be better because it's more special, specialized and suited for a specialist role. Now, like I was saying, there are some things to dislike about this light. Not anything that's super duper big, um, but the first one is is the fact that this light is extremely blue. It really stings your eyes when you use it. Now, what's cool is there is no um, green, I would say, at all with this light. So at least that is nice, unlike something like this Olight here that has a green uh, hint to it that is really, really noticeable. Um, this is a does a better job at just being blue, right? But because of that intensity of blue, it makes it look, instead of just like a 6500 light, almost like you're getting into 7000K. Like every time I use this light, I'm kind of straining my eyes, right? And I don't know if it's necessarily that it's a cheap emitter. I just feel like this is a specialist emitter, right? And then, of course, there's the UV, um, which is cool that it has three different you know, modes as well. But, you know, again, with this sort of thing, I don't think a lot of people that are just, you know, mechanics or anything like that necessarily um, are flashlight enthusiasts in that way. So if you gave this to somebody who's a mechanic or in a special industry or something like that, I don't think it's the biggest deal, but something as a flashlight enthusiast for me, I like those cooler, you know, higher CRI uh, and warmer tones is what I'm trying to say, or more neutral, so I can use it for a long time and enjoy it and it not be stinging or hurting my eyes. I mean, even now I'm blinking and I see it in my vision, right, from it being on the light mode. So that's the first thing not to like about this light. Um, the other thing is that because it has, it's kind of a, you know, double-edged sword, right? Because it has no uh, reflector whatsoever or no lens, the you get the good, really broad flood, but even with it having a flood, there isn't a lot of like density or candela in that light that is produced. So it's very short range, right? It does get bright enough that like you can, you can walk around in your yard, right? You can kind of see what, what's going on. It produces enough light that you can see in sort of the corners and make out, you know, sort of shapes. Definitely in no sort of way is like, a oh, I'm going to grab this because I heard a bump in the night and it's the closest flashlight, right? Which, again, that's a whole other conversation within itself. But, you know, light is one of your number one security tools out there. Um, so that is one other thing to really keep in mind. The blue not really having the greatest range or that much like intensity or candela in the actual light itself. The last thing is a little bit of a nitpick, but it's definitely true because I've been hearing it the whole time. And there's the fact that this just rattles 
right? So if you have it in your pocket or something or you're walking around, you're just gonna be hearing this rattle, you know, the whole time. Not the whole time, but you know what I mean. You're using it, it's rattling around doing that sort of stuff. So just something kind of keep in mind. Um, not the biggest deal. I know that they said that you can use a little bit lengthier triple A's, which I only thought there was one triple A size, but you know. Um, but they said that basically you can use a different size and it'll rattle less, right? But it can chew any uh, triple A's. If I'm saying double A's, sorry, I mean triple A's. So um, that's probably the last thing. Really, there's nothing rubbish in any sort of format or way about this light. So that just sort of leads me into the end here. Um, do I think that this is going to be an absolutely amazing go-to light for EDC that I would recommend to everyone? Well, well, no, I don't think so. Um, because it it's sort of specialized in one thing or another, just at the same sort of way that I would say super pinpoint you know, LEP laser is not going to be great for EDC because it just goes boink and, you know, is a laser pointer, basically. Um, I'm going to say the same for this. This has no sort of range that so could be used as a light source, uh, but I don't think it's going to be this master of EDC. Also, with the, with the, you know, sting that you're going to have with your eyes, even though you do have some really great things with the triple A, you know, being able to easily find it, chew through anything in any sort of situation as a power source, um, I don't think that this is what this light is all about. Now, if you do say, hey, do you think that this is a good light for you know somebody who is maybe an inspector, an electrician, a plumber, right? Uh, AC, you know, sort of situation, a mechanic, you know, maybe even someone who is dealing with cash and needs to check it, different things like that, but also you know, whatever the case, that you would maybe need a UV and use that in different sort of situations and also could benefit from an extreme flood at a closer range. I think that this is a great light and it will just whoop, go right into a shirt pocket and it's so light that it just disappears, right? And so I think in that way, I mean, I can't imagine on a professional tool, unless you need a high CRI like you're a doctor with a patient, right? But I think you're looking at a little of a different, you know, tool at that point and a different wheelhouse. I think though this is an awesome light and just kind of a fun one to have in your kit. Uh, at twenty dollars, even if you know you're not going to carry it all the time, if you want to kind of experiment with the UV thing or you want a light to, you know, again as you saw I did, charge up the loom on your watch, right? Or whatever the case. You know, this is a light that can go ahead and do it without any sort of problems and still have the convenience of being a regular flashlight. So that's basically it out of the out of the way, everything you know said and done. Um, if you do like this video, really appreciate it if you're going to give a like because it helps the channel as well as subscribe as we're constantly growing and it's just crazy to think that we just went over 1700 i feel like just yesterday i grinded so grind so hard and finally hit that thousand um you know subscriber mark and now we're almost at 2000 just crazy so thank you so much as well for taking time to watch my little channel there's so many awesome channels out there that you could be watching right now i hope everybody stays safe and has a great rest of your week you take care peace